This is a demonstration on applying a lateral splint. The base layer can be used um, as a base layer for applying a cast as well. So have all your gear organized. Um, I've got specific bits and pieces here, but a lot of this stuff is interchangeable. So I will make comment of that as we go. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is um, put a lateral splint on our friend here who is a cadaveric specimen. Um, so thanks to him for donating um, himself for this. So we're going to be putting on stirrups, just little stirrups. One comment about stirrups is if this is a lateral splint that is planned to be temporary until such time as surgery for a primary, primary repair is made available, try to avoid putting the stirrups over the potential incision site for the surgery. So let's put on a lateral stirrup and we'll place a medial stirrup. You can use longer stirrups if you like. Make sure they do stick well. I'm using a tongue depressor here just to keep the stirrups apart. You can use anything that just doesn't stick out a wrapper or some bandaging material if you like. Uh, next I will come over and get the soft band cast padding. I like soft band, it makes for good cast material. I'm just going to pad between the toes. First soft band over cotton wool because it is hydrophobic does not like water, so it tends to repel water. So I make a long skinny strip and we place that between the toes, like so, and then up the back, sort of tucks in behind the stopper pad at the back. This just helps to space the toes just a little bit, but um, also helps um, stop what I refer to as toe jam, that yucky, greasy, smelly stuff that develops when they've worn a cast for a while. These may well fell, fall out um, fairly soon after having put the splint on, but at least they've spaced out the toes while we do apply the splint. Let's not forget our dew claw. We'll pop a little one under there like so. Next, we will come over and get our stocking net, tubing net. This comes in different diameters. It's a nice thin tubular gauze material, makes for a nice underneath layer of a splint. So I'm measuring, I'm going to be putting a splint on that goes in this particular demonstration that goes from above the elbow to the end of the feet. So I measure past the upper level, past the distal level, then I give myself a little bit more, possibly another third again. So I've got plenty of length. When we stretch this bandage, it'll go wide and shorten. Let's cut that off and then just roll that together like so. Just notice I've got last night's painting project under my fingernails. All right. So roll that up all the way to the top. If the feet spaces fall out, we just have to put them back in again. Which one has? So I take that all the way to the top. Open it up waking it up nice and high for starters and then I pull it down that makes makes all the hair come in the same direction for extra comfort try and lift it over these toe um, soft band spaces I think I lost the one underneath the dew claw so we will just put another one back in there just keeps the dew claw up and off the underneath leg yeah, like my head gets in the way there. And down we come. If this was fractured, I'd have an assistant holding the leg like so, just to keep it in alignment. Um, if I'm working on my own and it's a, a leg that's not broken, you can rest it on something like so, which we might just do for this demonstration. Just want to be careful that we have a, a well-aligned leg after the splint's applied. All right, next layer, I'm going to grab the soft band conforming bandage again. Actually, I'll grab a new one just so that we've got plenty. There's the toenail. I want this splint to finish so I can just see the distal end of the middle two toes. So that's where I'm going to start with the cast. I'm starting distally 
and working proximally. I'm just going to rewind there a bit. Before we do anything, let's put donuts on the protuberances. So I've just got a length of uh, soft band, tying it into a knot, and I just keep going round and round to make, make a nice sort of donut here. I'm going to be putting that around the elbow to try and avoid pressure sores at the elbow, so I'm just going to have that handy for when I come up there. I'm also going to be putting one around the stopper pad. It's another area that will um, sometimes get into trouble with pressure sores. A bandage is not without complications. Dogs can get pressure sores. I have seen dogs lose their legs um, as a result of either a poorly applied or poorly maintained bandage. So attention to these details and avoiding pressure sores is important. So I just put that donut around the stopper pad at the back of this dog's leg. When I go to splint him, I'm going to try and keep a 15 degrees or just slightly tipped angle at his carpus, which protects the tendons. Okay, let's now come over and start again with our conforming layer, holding those donuts in place at the same time. So two layers at the start, toes just here. Now I'm going to be up, overlapping this conforming bandage approximately 50% on itself on the way up. If I had an assistant, they would probably be holding that in place for me, this donut up the top here. But we can manage, oh, I have an assistant, look at that, thank you, amazing. Ask for an assistant, one appears. All right, that's gone up. Okay, up the top here again, I'm gonna go two layers of soft band. I'm trying to get a nice, good, comfortable, comfortable bulky top layer to try and prevent um, rubbing at the top here. We'll come back down the leg again, overlapping 50% on the way down. That wasn't a hint when I asked for assistance before, Connell, but I should have asked for you before. Okay, so we've got up the leg, overlapping 50%, back down the leg, overlapping about 50%. Um, my assistant will keep his hand nice and flat so as not to um, put any dents or pressure sores as we go. The next layer, you can use one of a couple of things. We either use a Skeena Fixie E, which is this stuff, a very loosely woven gauze with a bit of stretch in it. The other product that you can use, which is probably more common, is this elastic conforming gauze. I've got an open one of these, one of these. I'll use that for this demonstration. So it is elastic. We don't want to over um, compress this bandage. It's not a Robert Jones. We're not putting everything on in compression. We just want to use this layer to hold the soft band in place, add a little bit more support. We're trying to maintain the 15 degree bend at the carpus as we go. Just taking the stretch out of it before I use it overlapping 50% on the way up, trying to keep everything smooth so we don't have creases. When I get to the elbow, I will just try to avoid putting pressure on the actual point of the elbow. And that's all I need to do is one layer. We can cut that for now. That layer will also help the next layer, which is a splint layer, stop it from sticking to the soft band. So if you want to reuse, take the splint off and reuse it, it makes it easy to do so. Just making sure the stocking net is all free. So that's looking quite good at this stage. All right, our next layer is the splint material. We can use a thermo resin. Here we've got Namoa cast. That's one that once you take it out of the packet, you put it into tap water, temperature water when you're in the tropics um, and it sets quickly. And once it's set, that's it, it's all over. Or we can use a thermoplastic, which is a material, this stuff, which goes into boiling hot water, goes al dente like spaghetti. If you get it wrong, you just take it off and you put it back in the hot water and away you go again. For today's demonstration, I'm going to be using the thermoplastic. Um, I'm just gonna use this because it's an off cut. It's probably a bit wide, but it'll be great for the demonstration. So I'll leave that there. If at this stage you were, I'm going to be doing a demonstration of a lateral splint, so I'm just putting a half splint down. If we were going to be casting this dog, we would get our cast material, let's just pretend this is the cast material, and we would be rolling it around the leg now. So this base layer is the same whether we're doing a lateral splint or whether we're going to be doing a full cylindrical cast. I'm going to get you to just stop there for a minute while I get some boiling water. All right, some of the questions that we receive are, 
when is it better to use the thermo resin, sorry, the thermoplastic over the thermo resin? A lot of it's personal preference. If I was going to be using a full cylinder cast, I would go to the thermo resin. It's a finer weave, thinner, lighter weight product to put on, but sets very hard. So it's quite nice to use as a full cylinder cast. This is just my opinion. If I just want to do a bit more of a temporary lateral splint that doesn't need to be maybe quite as strong, I would probably go for the thermoplastic. I find it molds quite easily and I quite like the use of that for a lateral splint. We would want four layers if doing a lateral splint. I'm not going to get four layers out of this leftover, so for the demonstration it will only be a couple of layers, maybe I'll get three. Um, we go for four layers. Was that answering your question, Carl? Mm. I think. Um, so a little bit of um, personal preference there. Um, the thermoplastic, as I said before, if you get it wrong, you just take it out, you dunk it back in the bucket of hot water and um, you can remould it. The other comment is this layer that I've just put on, which is the moulding layer. You can use the elastic, um, elastic conforming bandage. I've used the Skino Fixie, which is like a lightweight self-adhesive. Or you can use what we commonly refer to as vet wrap or rip wrap or the stretchy material that sticks to itself. Any one of those products is fine. The purpose being is to try and stop the cast sticking to the soft band underneath so it can be reused. So we could have used that as the next layer here. So there's variations of what can be used and all of the above are fine. All right, let's get to the stage where we're now going to be putting on the lateral split. Pre-measure the length that you're going to need. So I'm gonna be aiming to stop just a few millimeters shorter where my padding finishes, so about there and there. Fold it over. I wonder if I'm going to be lucky enough to get three layers out of this leftover. Not quite. But for, again, for the demonstration, I think that will be suffice. So we take that, and I've over here, we've just boiled the kettle. This does need to be freshly boiled water. It's going in very stiff. You can get that video over the top of that. Okay, grab yourself an instrument to pull it back out again because you don't want to be sticking your fingers in this boiling water. It will go super soft. I refer to it as al dente if you're a spaghetti eater. And if it doesn't go al dente and super soft, well your water's not hot enough and it's not malleable enough and you can see it's just coming out super soft. We want to work fairly promptly. Thanks Connell. Connell has um, got his fingers nice and flat there so he's not putting any divots in the um, splint. And you can see we can mold this splint quite nicely over the lateral aspect of this dog. This one's a little bit short. I want it down just a few millimetres above where the padding is. And then I'll take my gloves off and come back over with another layer of conforming to mold that splint while it's still soft to the shape of this individual's leg. And at this point, Again, just reiterate, we want to be very careful that we don't put thumbprints or anything in here that might um, put a pressure saw on the splint. I've just run out of that, so we're going to just swap over to this other product here. Just because I have it handy, it's a bit more stretchy, but it does the same thing. It's just moulding that splint so it fits nicely to the shape of this individual. Don't need a lot, that's all it needs to do is just hold it in place. Again, whichever layer you choose to use is a little bit of um, a user preference. And at this point, we can rest a little bit easy, talk about the weather, what we're doing on the weekend, while that goes off. This will settle, uh, set quite quickly. I used to roll the um, tubey cast up at this point to roll these edges over but what I found was in the process of that I was kinking the cast top and bottom so I've stopped doing that. I prefer to wait till it goes off and then when I roll this up I'll be rolling this little little bit of extra padding over the edge of the splint to try and um, protect the body against the um, splint and give us a nice round edge up here. So we can just pause that for a minute until that sets. All right, so we've spoken about the weather for a few minutes. Um, the cast, the splint has gone off. 
can hear it, feel it. So at this point, we'll now roll up our tubing net, and that is rolling the padding over the end of the splint material. Same thing would apply. If we'd done a full cylindrical cast, in which case I would have gone round, overlapping 50% on the way up, and back down, overlapping 50% on the way down over top of the base layer. Um, this stocking's a little bit longer than it needs to be. So I'm just going to give it a haircut. And the only reason I do that is I want the stirrups to come up beyond it. So you don't want me as a hairdresser when you look at that. But. So I've just shortened that up. Grab the stirrups. Now the purpose of the stirrups is to stop the splint slipping down. So I have seen them just lined like that, which is going to achieve nothing. Um, because they haven't got any pressure on the splint. So when you turn them over and bring them back up the cast, hoik up on it. You want them to hold this up the leg. So there we go there, same on this side. This is just on the softer bandage, but I'm putting a fair bit of upward pressure on that to try and keep this splint uphill. So that's the distal part. Same at the top here. We just fold that down and we've got a nice soft round edge up the top there and we've got these toes that we can just see. I really like to be able to see toes, you can see that oh no, there's still some soft, pad, soft band padding in there. I um, like to see the toes, if they start to swell, go purple, we know that the splint that we've applied or the cast that we've applied is too tight and that needs, the splint needs to be removed ASAP. Now, the next layer, the final or tertiary layer, can be either vet wrap um, or the equivalent product, or some people prefer to go straight to a elastoplast, either's fine. I'm a bit of a vet wrap person, so I'll use that. Um, I tend to come in at an angle just to cover the bottom of the toes like so. And again, just unwinding it without a lot of pressure. I'm pre-stretching here and then unwinding, pre-stretching, unwinding. If I'm using vet wrap, which is stretchy, I do not come past the top of the bandage at this point. If you go past it, there's a bit of a risk that we will um, tourniquet the top of the, um, the leg. All right, so that's just one tertiary layer. And I don't deny that this next step is a bit of meism. It's just what I do. I think we're all allowed that. Um, at, I put a one row of elastoplast, so it's half on the splint, half on the on the dog. And that's just to try and stick the cast to the top of the leg, but also helps to stop crud, the dam, the river, whatever else dogs get into, ending up down inside the splint slash cast. And then down the bottom. I'll sometimes put another layer just for a bit more durability. And you may well ask, well, why didn't you just do the whole thing in elastoplast? And I'm not sure I can answer that sensibly. So if you want to do the whole thing in elastoplast, then there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Okay, we can still see our toes. I don't like covering them up. I keep repeating myself, but I do like to be able to see them. Some people argue that... Um, dirt and crud and everything else gets up in there. Yes, it does, but at least it's closer to the ground and it can fall out, and I just get nervous if I can't see those toes. If an animal is really uncomfortable in this, if it really starts to chew at it and gnaw at it, um, we're very quick to blame the animal as being non-compliant, but it's normally because they've got a pressure sore underneath. So don't ignore, ignore the animal if it's really annoyed and chewing at the cast, or if you see an offensive smell. Get it off, have a look what's going on underneath there. It probably means you've got a pressure sore. All right, that's a lateral splint.